fine in, in, in the next two stages of prayer stage six is receptive prayer and at this stage of praying we become a fully open vessel empty of ego we become freed of our sin and of our selfishness and selfishness leads us to sin it is selfishness that is the root cause of all of our problems and selfishness can only be annihilated within the fire of prayer of mantra of holy name this is their incredible power and mercy and it relieves us of any final tentacles of weakness and habits that are preventing our full reunion at this stage of praying prayer becomes natural for us we begin to enjoy prayer's fruits and we begin to grow new climates of charity of virtue and of enthusiasm to share it with others at this point we have shed our skin and we use the full faculty of the body the mind and the senses to focus on divinity. And we don't use the imagination or the intellect in doing this, we use the heart. And we enter into the holiest of holy chapels found with only within divine prayer. There's no way, there's no other way. There is no other way, there is no other way, there is no other way. Prayer has to become your daily best friend. Just like, you know, you, how much time do we spend a day watching television? You know, I say this to my kids all the time. Okay, how many movies have we watched today? You know, so what, four, five, six hours of watching TV? How much time did you give to God? Did you pray at all? Very important. So like walking into a temple, a synagogue or a church, you become the prayer at this stage. Your body is infused with it you are ready to have an encounter with the Lord and Our Lady. Your consciousness has been sufficiently recovered such that your, human, your humility before God and Goddess now becomes manifest. At this level of praying, you start to depart from the do domain of man and you enter into the realm of the Divine Feminine. I'm gonna say that again because it's really important. At this level of praying, your consciousness becomes fully sufficiently recovered that you can have a vision of God. You are ready to depart the realm of man and enter into the realm of the divine feminine. Prayer is no longer about you or what you're experiencing. It is entirely directed towards an experience with divinity and the kingdom. The dark night of the senses is over. The dark night of the mind is over. The dark night of the soul is over. All of it's been tamed. And you are now fully ready to direct your free will towards the tangible eternal kingdom. Why do I say tangible eternal kingdom? Because the kingdom is a place to be experienced. It's not some illusory fantasy thing like somewhere over the rainbow, like a movie. The kingdom is real. And the kingdom is always eager for us to reach into it and have an experience of it. So how do we do that? So in the seventh stage of praying, we begin to enter into trance. And within trance, ecstasy is found within a divine vision. The kingdom becomes manifest. In this climate, mystical visions and experiences become an everyday experience for the devotee. The Lord and the Lady have received us within the core of their heart, and they are now blessing us with visions that come and go. So the kingdom at this point is like a lotus flower that opens and closes, opens and closes during prayer. So the kingdom will open and you'll be given a vision if one of the, maybe one of the forests of the kingdom, or you'll have a vision of God or a goddess, or maybe of one of the saints, um, or maybe even of your own eternal spiritual body. And these visions, they will come and go. But the delight and the ecstasy that is available to the soul now begins to unfold and prayer becomes exciting. And you'll find that within the interior piece of solitary prayer, the illumination that Holy Name has reaches into the soul with its merciful ability and it pulls the seeker out of the world of illusion into eternity. Now love overwhelms the heart. 
and grace is so profound that we become humble before God. We begin to feel his presence in everything at all times and we are blessed and we radiate this sweetness that, that is imbibing and filling up our heart. And this is the final level of prayer and it is the goal of our life. This is the climate of devotion that we are aching to attain. And once we touch it, it becomes addictive. It is fresh as first love. Think about first love, how beautiful and fresh first love is. It's so innocent, it's so beautiful. And every day, every day that you're going to meet your lover, it's so exciting, you've got butterflies in your stomach. Now imagine how much more intense it would be to experience that love with divinity, that relationship with God and goddess, that reunion that we've been searching for, for since the beginning of our creation. We have been here forever. And the one thing that we are aching for and searching for more than anything is divinity's love. We want to receive it in the crucible of our heart and our consciousness. And this love for divinity intensifies within the fires of prayer. And the heart now feels compelled towards God in a way like never before. Now the divine romance of creator and created begins to capture the mind like never before. Everything in life becomes um, uh, meaningless by comparison with the experience of divinity. So at this stage, you may end up feeling such an intense yearning for the divine that you'd rather be alone with holy name than out there reaching for things that begin to feel like they have no benefit or no meaning at all. So, but this doesn't happen until we detach ourselves fully from the illusions of this world. And the illusions of this world have been very carefully prepared for us by the, um, the beings that are ruling this world. They have prepared for us many illusions to distract us from our true goal. And we see it, it's everywhere. Advertising and films and social media, and shopping, and food, and drink, and drugs. We are bombarded with desires, morning, noon, and night.